Hello everyone, welcome. It is another episode of telling you what I did last week in the stream that you missed, but today I'm not recording it the day before, it's actually the day before that. So maybe you'll see this a little bit earlier than usual. Last time, I spent a lot of time making a second carpenter. In the last episode we had a look at this first carpenter and I showed you how it worked. I made a second one, the reason for that is because sometimes you need to make two things at once and sometimes somebody's making something and you want to make something else. Or it's just nice to keep one with a recipe that you're doing a lot of. Uh, because they take a while, it's useful to be able to, you know, do two at once, but it's very expensive. And we discovered that the problem with it, indeed, is that the, um, what you might call the, the bottleneck in the whole recipe system is actually in here, no. It's in one of these. Um, surely it's not in here. No. This is just a, that's a centrifuge. Haha, <laughs> it's the same thing. Carpenter. That's why I didn't. We'll talk about the centrifuge in a minute. Uh, it's this thing. Because this memory requires this PCB, which requires grog. And there's no other way of making it. No standard, you know, acid. What do you use? Sulfuric acid or something? You know, just a standard etching acid. Nope. Has to be grog, which is food, except not. I mean, sure, grog is just a stand in for acid, but the acid is made of spider eyes. And spider eyes come from spiders and really nowhere else. In fact, we should probably check that. Boop, 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 boop. You can grow them, actually. Maybe we should um, think about that. I'll bring that up with the people who have clearly already seen it by the time I get around to mentioning it anyway. But we can grow them. And we've got one left. <laughs> so that's the that's it. We can't really make any more carpenters or indeed anything that uses that set of recipes. Um, Although, did you notice if maybe there was a carpenter recipe for this? There is not. So again, crafting things. So the carpenter, as we learned from last time, is great at producing some things like this, where it was a big recipe and all these things and manual and you had to fill the thing up. Now it's much smaller and lots of more options. This one only has the crystal teen version, which makes 60, by the way, which is actually really good and red alloy ingot one, whereas this has lots of different options for different amounts of them uh, and much smaller and a boosting mixture, ver mixture version as well. So, you know, the, the carpenter's that much better, but not everything has a carpenter recipe. In fact, some things don't have any machine recipe at all, just the crafting recipe. But we're part way towards fixing that as well, because look down here, Tristan spent the stream making the ME system. This is the perfect way of doing anything. So instead of having to go through all of those drawers, uh, I'm reluctant to look at the wiring, but maybe we can, mm, no. I'd do it on creative mode, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, the, actually, maybe we can have a look. Uh, bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. Oh, we can go in here. Um, so, you have an ME controller. The ME controller is, I think, necessary. Uh, it allows you to connect multiple devices to the same thing. Forgive me if this goes wrong. I think for a start, you need the ME controller just to get power in. This is now powered down. Um, so the ME controller does multiple things, one of which is to transmit power around the system. Um, it is essentially equivalent to refined storage. There are differences, obviously, or would just be the same thing. Uh, Tristan and Pete have played this mod pack before, so the, between them they did refined storage last time, and I have played with ME itself, which is actually applied in logistics to um, a lot myself. It's my go-to computerized storage system, but they, not having done it before, means that they can do the quests, and I'll just say, hey, this is how I remember it working from last time. Uh, let's have a look at the recipes for these things, by the way. So that was Fluix Cable. So that's, um, let's see how cheap that is. Okay, yes. A carpenter recipe, perfect. So look, you can make it in the engineer's workshop if you want to waste your time, or you can shove silicone and some stuff in here. It's just Fluix plates and red alloy. So these things are kind of hard to make, but not super hard to make. Um, and what you're looking at is these purified and not purified crystals. In fact, these, that's harder to make than this, so it's not worth it. Uh, and these are found in the world, the fluids crystals. No, 
A charged red surface quartz or nether quartz and redstone dust into puddle, uh, into water. So those are the things that you find in the world. You do find charged surface quartz in the world. I think you can charge it though, if you need to. Uh, enrichment chamber will do it. Nope, takes ore. Energetic confuser takes surface quartz, and so you can do it. So you can make these as much as you want. And these are basically the data cables. There is a limit to what they can do. Uh, and I haven't, we haven't got around to that yet, but there are things that tell you uh, when they're reaching their limit. And we'll probably talk about that in a future episode because it's not relevant just yet. But you'll notice also, I'm really trying. <laughs> I can't see what I'm doing. This ME storage bus is it. This is the entire system. There's an ME controller, presumably with power coming in from underneath. There's an ME storage bus, which you can configure. Uh, you can put, I think this is um, a filter. Uh, partition storage, configures a partition. So you, if you click this, I think that it will take the things that are currently in the system, put them in here as sort of filter recipes. But the system that it's connected to is the controller. It's actually a slave, it doesn't matter which one you use. Um, and that allows the ME system to see every inventory in the draw system. Basically, that controller slave is an inventory, like a chest, and it outputs, and it tells anything next to it that all of this stuff is inside it. Which means that, oh, I'm getting lost. <laughs> Help me. Shush, though. So this now is able to see everything in the draw system, and you can search. So let's say you want your spider eyes. For something, you type it in, you get the thing, and you can craft. So if you wanted to make a chest, you can do the click here and you can do the click and you can press the plus and it will put the things from the drawers into the thing. These are the actual items, not a, not a ghost of them or anything like that. And you can draw these out as many as you want to, which is why you can't put multiple because if you take one out, which I'm not going to do because we've got enough damn chests, um, the recipe will stay. As long as there are more things to draw from the ME system, the recipe will stay. That made it much, much easier to stay far too late at night and... Um, keep creating things because that's right next to these. So we made a new carpenter, but whilst I was making the carpenter, Tristan was doing that. So I didn't use that for the carpenter, but the thing that I clicked on before was this centrifuge. The centrifuge is quite easy to make, especially with the ME system now, because you ask it for some of these things. And the centrifuge allows us to turn um, honeycomb into honey and the other things that honeycombs come from. Now, what was I saying? I won't get onto that just yet because I was saying something that was right. Oh, eventually this, ME system will be able to craft things for us on request. So you can build a, a sort of a server, like a multi-block uh, system, where it can assemble, based on a recipe, things that you have the ingredients for in the same system. So if you put a recipe for a chest in that thing, you could type the word chest and there would be the option to craft one if there wasn't one in the system already and you could just wait a few seconds it'll pop out uh, that's where we're going to be going and that is how we will end up automating things like the grow if we can have enough spider eyes uh, now I did I do remember that spider eye we had to look that there's these spider essences um, which are spider seeds obviously um, spider chunk excuse me Jen has safely arrived wherever wherever so uh, with another couple of mob chunks, uh, a few spider eyes, you can probably um, put them into... <laughs> Gross. Uh, growing some more spider eyes, but we did find there... There is a spider spawner and a skeleton spawner. Now, I hadn't realised when I showed you the other day that the mob farm that is over there... It's a few weeks now. Um, if you remember it, is actually... That's the tower that we found very early on, chopped down and replaced with that thing. So it's actually surrounding the spawners that were already in the world. I thought that, you know, I never actually occurred to me to do that. Um, every time I've made a mob farm, you make a spawner from some mod. Well, actually, that's not true. I have made a vanilla mob farm, but that doesn't count because it's vanilla. Uh, anyway, the centrifuge, which I've installed over here, allows you to turn things from honeycombs into the thing that the honeycomb can drop. So if you poke in here and you can see that we've got, ooh, honey drops and beeswax, brilliant. If you have a click on show recipes, uh, all these different honeycombs come from different bees. And if you spin them, you get 
usually some honey drops and beeswax and then a thing another 100 percent apparently so this is just orange colored comb magenta colored comb boring it just gives you uh, i'm assuming that these are just um dyes yeah so you can get dyes from bees but you can also get bees that produce interesting things like fruit this one apparently produces grapefruit you can get a certus bee which produces Certus quartz and prosperity shots and stuff. And they'll have a chance of coming out of the comb, so you're not going to get a huge amount of them, but voila, you need to breed these bees. So <laughs> a quantum and a spatial bee has a chance of producing a certus comb, 5% for that one, 50% for that one, and a mellow comb, which in a centrifuge presumably just produces nether quartz and black quartz. So that's kind of okay. What can you do with this? Or oh, you can package things up. I'm not sure what these are for, especially when you've got drawers. I think that because we, like if you had the forestry mod and not the drawers mod, then you want to be able to s compress your storage. So you can put nine things into a single crate and then you can stack the crates. So that just increases your storage uh, if you're only playing with forestry, but we don't mind about that. But if you wanted to make a quantum bee, how do you do that? Well, you can mutate it or you can breed it, which is a spectral and a spatial, which was the other one that we had. So we, now we need to now to get spatial, we need to spatial, blah, 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 spoilers eventually. you. You can look, work this out for yourself with experimentation if you want to, which is great if you're just playing with forestry. If you're doing a billion other things at once as well, I kind of don't mind, um, you know, just cheating with the with the recipes here because <laughs> for some people, I, I try to explain myself. For some people, that process of exploration is really important, and of course, a lot of these bees come from. Well, the Binia's Extra Bees, for example, wouldn't create Certus Combs if you didn't have applied energistics. So, you know, they still work together. But if you've got so many mods, for me, that uh, process of exploration and waiting for the thing to happen and going, oh, I wonder what happens, um, doesn't appeal as much as it might to others. But let's talk about the bees themselves. So I have made a golden exchanger, by the way. I spent some time on this. <laughs> this literally just swaps the things in the world for whatever you tell it to. Um, so I'm just going to get sidetracked a little bit. Um, if you, I think you shift right click, uh, let's see what we've got in here and maybe we can show you. So let's say we wanted to do, take them out of there. If you wanted to replace some dirt with some stone, for example, and I've got this quartzite cobblestone as an example, but it could be anything. Um, so if right click on that and now this is going to be replacing whatever you right click on with that stuff as long as you've got some in your inventory let pick that up thanks for uh, replacing that and then if i was to right click on this whoop that's in there and now i should have some dirt it's actually replaced it with the grass block that's amazing i didn't know it would do that um, and you can press comma to increase the size of it and you can see how it's using up uh, durability so eventually that's gonna break what i would like to know is current mode plane horizontal column. oh that's cool you can choose how it replaces stuff so if you wanted to you could it's all the same type of block look so you can see that there's dirt underneath that but presumably underneath the dirt there's not any more and this is all grass blocks so it's not going to do a dirt block or indeed it will skip the dirt block that's interesting we're all learning um, or indeed that um, cobblestone block. So, yeah, it's going to take durability. We should probably find out if it can be repaired in the magma anvil, I would expect so. So if you do this, whoop, all of that gets changed into the thing. And if you do this, and then you can switch it back. And then I don't have enough dirt because I put that down and it's dirt, not grass anymore, apparently. Um, anyway, that's pretty cool. It wasn't too expensive to make. It, all it requires, the most expensive thing it requires is the previous tiers. But you can also use it to make the next tier, which again is iron, silicon, a bit of this. You know, these are not expensive things. An exchange accord tier two, uh, we're there now. Some of this stuff is quite cheap. And then this presumably turns into four, which you can turn into compressed diamond. So that's getting expensive now. But all it does is it increases the range and presumably the durability of it and how much you can use it. But it's dead good for making something out of one material and then now it's marble or something anyway i was showing you my shows you my analyzer please respond so this thing here can analyze 
be sapling butterfly or other individual so i'm guessing that some mods will allow you to do it so i actually got a bee from a quest so we'll have a look you put honey in here to pacify the bee presumably you put the this is a queen there are queens princesses and drones I'm not sure what the princess is for uh so you can see this is a forest queen pristine stock um and all of these stats can basically be improved by breeding the bee. You can increase the quality of the bees over time um, by breeding with themselves, but you can also produce different types of bees by breeding with other types of bees. So let's have a look at, for example, the bee breeding. Forest plus meadows equals common. Forest plus modest equals common, common, common. Right? But again, you get like cultivated sometimes. So we saw that forest plus common so if you do it again with the result of that then you start to get to cultivated and then what's this i don't know leprion look there's some some time it's a chance it occurs between march 29 and april 15 so you have to be the there's many factors that change what the bees produce and what they breed into um, like a wintry bee for example doesn't like being in warm places and a forest bee doesn't like being in hot places really so this let me explain. The species, blah, blah, blah. So the... Ta -da -ta 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 -ta, maybe it's in here? Climate. So the climate that the bee will work in, this is a, a normal climate bee with no tolerance. I, I believe that the planes we're standing on right now are normal climate. So this bee will work, produce um, drones and princesses, and will um, pollinate flowers and presumably breed in this climate. But the icy one, which we saw in NEI that didn't, we don't have one of, wants icy, uh, i.e. a tundra. Let's see if we've got one. Oh, and by the way, you find them in these, right? So you can also find bees. This isn't unusual hive, so it's going to have unusual bees, and it's probably going to hurt if we uh, attack it by, even if we use a scoop to get the bees out, they're probably still going to be a bit upset with us. Um, so you have to be ready for being bitten, and different bees can have different effects, like magic bees might not be that friendly in you know produce something so we've got an oblivion queen we've got rocky you've got valiant we've got a wintry one let's have a look so we'll put this in here and it's going to tell us that it prefers icy up one so it can be icy or whatever's one warmer than icy which might be cold rather than normal if that's the case then there's no way you're going to be able to breed a wintry princess with a forest queen or a forest drone because the forest bee wants to be in a normal biome and the wintry bee wants to be in a cold one and one of them isn't going to be happy. So what you have to do then is breed bees with a greater tolerance. So maybe you could improve the stock of forest bees that you have so that they have a tolerance of up or down by one, which means they could both work in a cold biome. Um, again, humidity, all of these things I don't quite remember how you're supposed to know what your current environment is, but I'm sure there's a way of finding out. And then, of course, it tells you the produce of it, so the possible mutations, I see, um, and evolution. Not interesting. Um, I think somewhere it will... Oh, here we go. Well, I put it in four, and it was supposed to be in three. So it could possibly produce a honeycomb. I don't know if you can learn about more. Maybe you can. So we're going to be experimenting with bees. It's been a long time since I've played with them, but I do like them. And you'll notice, I remember you said, saplings and butterflies. You can catch some of the butterflies that we've seen flying around. They're very rare. I hardly ever see them. But you can also put saplings in here. Let's try that. Have we got a saplings chest? Right now. Surely we've got some saplings somewhere. Is it over here? Maybe it's still in the old place. Ah, not saplings. I mean, we could just break a thing and get saplings, but it kind of bugs me that I can't fix this sign because it keeps opening the chest that's behind it. Someone at some point has managed to lag out enough to be able to try walking around just after opening the chest uh, and then fail. Um, there must be saplings somewhere, but I don't know where they are. So let's Should we just break a tree. I'll be back in a minute and we'll uh, investigate a sapling. So they're in the drawers. 
Any <laughs> they're all in the jaws. So saplings also consume honey drops because obviously you need to pacify a tree as well. This is a silver lime tree, silver lime sapling, blah, 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 blah. Matures average height small. Again, you can breed trees with one another. For example, evolution. Oh, I don't know. That's a little bit more involved because in order to breed trees with one another, you can't just put them in a beehive like you can with bees, which I didn't mention, but you just put them in the beehive and they make another bee and then the next generation continues. You have to put bees near the leaves and then wait for one of the leaves itself to mutate, or at least that's how it used to work. So you would put multiple you know, beehives around in your trees, and that's actually helpful because the bees themselves do prefer different types of flowers. Um, where does it say that? Flower type, flowers. Um, what does this like? Nope. Snow. <laughs> I don't know what that is. So maybe there's snowy flowers, maybe it just needs snow, but the bees need to be able to find some form of flower or other source of pollen to keep the hive going, obviously. So different bees like different things. I found an end bee, which did not like live in... Have well, I still got it in my backpack or in here? No. Um, it didn't like living in this world. I tried to grow it near the... Um, little crop of end flowers we got over here. But I didn't like that, probably because the biome is wrong. So I have to go to the end to make my end be happy. And here's the uh, things you put them in, by the way. It just looks like this. So there's no queen. If you put a queen in here, now there's no flowers. What are you talking about? What's that? Oh no, there we go. It's happy. So it takes a minute to find them. This queen is now going to produce, I think, one princess some drones and some honeycomb and they'll show up in here when the queen dies which is when this runs out you can then breed the princess with a drone i think it happens automatically but maybe maybe it doesn't um to make another queen and then the cycle continues and then if you want to produce um a different species if you want to crossbreed them you just put one princess and another type of drone in here and then you get them so that, that's how that goes on what does this do Ah, more information, look at that. Active species, you know. So they do have, like, it's basically uh, dominant and recessive genes is their species. So you've got a dominant species and a recessive species, and as you breed them, you'll find that, you know, if they've got two... You've got two queens with an inactive species of something else, then you basically one in four of them, of their offspring, will be that species rather than the other one because of how the, the square thing works. They have to both... You have to get the recessive gene for both of them. There you get the idea. So possible produce this, and you can put a. Um... In fact, I don't even have one. Don't know where it'll be there. You can put a, a B frame. Here's some look. Gentle frame mutation lifespan. So these improve the bees. Look, impregnated frame double the production, decay faster. Not quite sure what that means. Uh, in this one. Oh no, decay, decay slower. So let's put that in, just to see what happens. And I think some of the frames might be hostile to some of the bees, so you don't want to get it too wrong. Um, but you know, you see the bees are using the thing. Oh, you can't put a, right. So there's a second tier of the bee house, and you can put the frame in that. Right, so, we started on bees. I've spoken more about bees than anything else today, but that's because that's what I'm excited about right now. We've got the carpenter, we've got the ME system. I'm excited about the ME system, but there's not a lot to say. You can search and you can craft, what more do you want? Uh, and the bees, there's a lot to say. There's obviously these trees out here. Look, what happens if that cross-pollinates with that? Hold on. Okay, you'll be glad to know that the purple slime sapling is not recognized. as a type, which is lucky because that would be weird. Um, what I did discover, unfortunately, is that <laughs> the silver lime sapling that I have identified is now slightly different from everything. Like, the default one doesn't have any of that information on it. Unknown genome. So all the unknown genome ones stack because they have the same information about them. 
And then as soon as you know something about it, it won't stack with anything that doesn't have exactly the same information, which is possibly nothing at all. It's maybe that they never stack again. So we're going to have to figure out what to do with that. Um, but it means that the tree that grows is, you know, based on that information. Uh, there's nothing special in here. So you can't cross-pollinate the slime, which is lucky. But you can cross-pollinate all of these other things. Well, many of these other things. Certainly the vanilla ones. So we'll find out. Um, I will probably not play between now and Monday, so we'll find out on stream. I hope that you will join me then, and I hope that you remember to check out... Well, Lawrence probably doesn't have a video this week, but I'll probably just put up Lawrence's previous video or something. I think I, I missed one. We're out of kilter. We're out of sync. I don't know how. Um, but maybe this will fix it. So go and have a look at that. See what he is up to with his ridiculous tower with a giant chicken on it. And hang on. What the heck has been happening up there? Uh, and an upside down tree growing out of it. Yeah, yeah, just four giant chickens. Seems perfectly appropriate. Why is there a skeleton? I heard a skeleton, but I don't see a skeleton. Um, oh, and I've made some arrows out of end rods, but it turned out not to be that great. Um, it's, are they in there? Have you made little spawners? Is that what you've made? Probably. Um, so I replaced the end rod part with living wood because that will... When you make a tinker's arrow, you get a certain amount of ammo with it. So it takes damage as you use it. Even if you use it to hit people with, by the way. So don't do that. Um, and as you fire it, you lose one piece of ammo, but it cancels your ability. So if you make it out of um, living wood, then it repairs itself and you get more ammo back. It doesn't make any sense. Don't, don't worry about it. Um, so I made a magma slime arrow there. Otherwise, nothing to report. I hope to see you at the stream, and I hope that you can follow Lawrence's videos because he's doing something completely different from everybody else. Until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you.